So it's time for us to do another quick update video on the M1 Apple Silicon Max. I've been using this entry-level 8GB M1 MacBook Air for as much of my work as I can. And I've been experimenting with the 16GB M1 Mac Mini. Now these machines have been pretty universally praised, so in this video we'd like to show you a couple of things that aren't so great with the M1. Okay, so I just want to start quickly with Bluetooth, which I mentioned in the last update. And I've been doing some more testing since, and I still haven't had any issues. What about you? Uh, nothing out of the ordinary. So, uh, sorry that we haven't been able to, to find any issues. But I know that lots of you out there are reporting issues. If you're struggling with Bluetooth issues, there are some videos out there that show how to reset the Bluetooth on your Mac OS. Uh, but it's not great that you should have to do this on a brand new machine. So what could be causing the issue? Uh, it could be a variety of things. I wonder whether um, RF interference from USB 3.0 devices could be a thing here. Um, all electrical devices are prone to emit radio frequencies, and in the case of USB 3.0, unfortunately, some of those frequencies are at 2.4 gigahertz. And, and that's the frequency used for Bluetooth and Wi-Fi? It is. So if you've got some devices like that, you might try unplugging them, moving them further away, or changing your cables for better quality shielded versions. Now, that may not be a complete fix. It does seem that these machines do have some wireless issues. One of our developers has been testing an M1 MacBook Air to assess its suitability for web development. We've got a video coming on that soon. And he reported back that the Wi-Fi seemed a bit slow. So we thought we'd test that out. Yeah, so as we're back in the office today, uh, we've got a good quality mesh Wi-Fi network here, and we also have a very fast leased line internet connection. So we decided to pitch Pete's M1 MacBook Air against my Intel MacBook Pro 13-inch. And for our first test, we connected up to one of our local file servers, and we copied a large 4.7 gigabyte file over. Uh, first up was my Intel MacBook Pro, and it took one minute and 58 seconds. Uh, next, we copied the same file with my M1 MacBook Air, and it copied fine. How, how long did it take? Um, about the same, maybe. And in minutes and seconds, Pete? Four minutes and 59 seconds. Ouch. So basically three times as long as the Intel machine. Yeah, that is pretty absurd. When we've got some more time, we'll do some more testing on that. But first, we thought we'd run an internet speed test. We'll put the results side by side on the screen. But as you can see, the Intel MacBook was faster. So we tested the machines in alternating order. And what we've got here in the office is a one gigabit leased line. So we definitely don't have any contention issues. Our mesh Wi-Fi though doesn't run at one gigabit, which is why you don't see the, the full speed on the test. But certainly it does appear that the M1 has got reduced Wi-Fi performance when you compare it to Intel Macs. Yeah, so we've seen this in two separate M1 MacBook Airs. This is just a quick update video, so we haven't done loads of testing. Perhaps we'll do more of that if we have the time and include the M1 Mac Mini too. Yeah, and we'd be really interested to hear if this is affecting any of you guys. Uh, but for now, let's talk about USB. Yeah, there's a problem with USB, right? There is. Uh, I was using my Samsung T5 drive. Now, I have quite a collection of these. I, I like these drives. Uh, and I thought it was a bit slow when copying files over from the M1 Mini. So I ran Blackmagic Disk Speed Test, and I was very surprised at the result, because it was slower than the USB 3 performance on my old 2013 Mac Pro. Really? Really. That's unbelievable. Seems like something we should test. Uh, and indeed, I have been testing it. I've tested it on the M1 Mini, the M1 MacBook Air, and also my trusty Intel MacBook Pro 13-inch. So on the Intel, I got 478 megabytes per second in write performance and 520 megabytes per second for read performance. Well, that sounds pretty normal for a Samsung T5. Uh, was that with the standard cable? Yeah, so I'm just using the standard cable that Samsung supplies. Okay, so how does it score on the M1 machines? Okay, so for write performance, I got 359 on the Mini and 386 on the Air. So more than 100 megabytes per second less than the Intel. Yeah, that's quite a performance deficit. What about the uh, read performance? So that was 388 on the Mini and 379 on the Air. Uh, remember, that Intel machine managed 
520 megabytes per second for read. So an even bigger deficit. We should say, of course, that there'll always be a bit of variation in these tests, such as we're seeing between the two M1 machines, but there's a very clear performance difference to the Intel machine here. Yeah, it's actually pretty shocking. Um, of course, the Mini has two USB Type-A ports as well, and Samsung supply a Type-A to Type-C cable with these drives. So these are USB-A 5 gigabits per second, so surely they're going to be slower. Uh, well, you'd think so, but that is basically USB 3.0 spec, and I got 371 on write and 366 on read. So basically no difference. Right. So what that says to me is that the USB 4 or Thunderbolt 3 ports on the M1 Max are running this USB SSD at USB 3.0 speeds. How does that make you feel, Dave? Uh, honestly, I'm, I'm pretty appalled by it because there's just there's no way that Apple didn't know about this. Uh, and I don't find that acceptable in a brand new machine, considering all of the hype that's surrounded it. Okay. Well, that's fair enough, but could it be that we've just got bad M1 machines or a, a faulty SSD or faulty cable? Well, I did wonder that, so I've tried other T5 drives from my collection, I've tried other cables, and it's the same story every time. Uh, furthermore, I've also seen a number of other reports of M1 users, uh, both on YouTube and in the blogosphere, and they're saying the exact same thing. So these machines do have some issues, which is, to be fair, to be expected, really. Mm -hmm. um, perhaps Apple can apply a fix in a firmware update. Yeah, I think that's entirely possible. Um, at the end of the day, this is all just part of the joys of early adoption and being Apple's beta testers. And it rather adds weight to what you were saying uh, about pro users, people who rely on their computer to earn a living, perhaps needing to wait for these issues to be ironed out. Absolutely, this could have a pretty big impact on professional workflows. Anyway, that's it for this quick update. Um, Pete and I are doing some video codec testing this week in Final Cut Pro and DaVinci Resolve, so look out for a video on that later in the week. Hopefully you found this quick update to be useful, and maybe we did enough to earn a thumbs up. Or a thumbs down if you feel so inclined. In any case, see you next time for some more Geek Week.